Hi guys, I'm Dr. Duck Vung, world famous bariatric surgeon. Here's my surgery residency diploma. I'm an MD, not a PhD, not a lab, not a dentist, not a chiropractor, not a health coach, <laughs> you know, not a social worker. I'm a surgeon. So this is worth a share right here because a lot of people don't understand this. For all the Uncle Billy's and Aunt Sally's in the world, one in a thousand Americans have died from COVID. Put a one in the comment section, please. Put a one in the comment section. If you have a friend or a loved one who says, COVID's no big deal. It's like a bad flu. Um, not that many people have died. Now, here's what's stupid. If they say something like 300,000 Americans, that's nothing out of like, uh, like our country is so populated. Put a one in the comment section. If you have a friend or loved ones who thinks it's no big deal, because the population of America is so big and that, you know, 300,000 deaths is not that bad. Okay. Look at all these ones. This is where our educational system is embarrassing. It's a fucking embarrassment. All the Australians, Canadians, Europeans, the Japan, the fucking Chinese are fucking laughing. They don't understand. We can't do the math. Okay. So let me do the math for you. This is how bad this shit show has gotten. Okay, guys. So, Here's my calculator. I have it on zero. How many Americans are there? Now, I don't mean to ignore my European friends, but America is the shit show. Amen. So look at this number. So everyone agrees there's roughly 330 million Americans, roughly 330 million Americans. Yes. Yes. Okay. So now what I want you to do, Uncle Billy, is divide that by the number of people who have died. Today is December 27th. Divide that by 330,000 deaths. Hit the equal sign, Uncle Billy. That's a thousand. One in a thousand fucking Americans have died. This is ridiculous. And we still have people going, oh, that's not that many people. Our population is huge. It's nothing. It's a drop. It's not a fucking drop. One out of a thousand Americans have died. When the fuck are you going to get through your head? This is ridiculous. Now put a yes in the comment section if this is a head turner for you. If this makes sense. Like, like it crept up on you. Did this not creep up on you? You were like, oh, yeah, 300, that's bad, 300,000. But, you know, it's no big deal. 100,000 deaths, 200,000 deaths. 300,000 is one in a thousand people. Put, put yes in the comments section if this is a wake up call that you're like, what the hell? Like, yes, like it's weird. You don't think, you think it's like, oh, it's not that big of a number compared to 330 million. It's one in a thousand Americans. So let me do the math a different way for you guys. The, you know, we, I don't know fucking why, but we have college football right now in America. So college football, the University of Michigan, which I'm a fan of the University of Michigan for no other reason than I like their uniforms. I know. And I'm not gay. I'm just saying I like their uniforms. Okay. So, <laughs> so their big ass stadium will hold a hundred thousand fans. The stadium will hold a hundred thousand fans. So 100,000 divided by 1,000 is 100 people. If you are at the game, at Michigan game yesterday, and there's 100,000 people in the stands, okay, 100 of them just croaked. Let's say you're at the football game and the entire University of Michigan band dies, like just keels over and dies. Uncle Billy would go, oh, look at that. Fake news. They're faking it. They're lying. Look, they didn't all die. That's nothing. They didn't all die. You know, they'll say shit like, only old, only old people died. But yeah, but they're all nursing home people. What the fuck is wrong with you? What is wrong with people? Why are we, why do we, why are we going to have the Super Bowl? Why are we having football games? Why did the fucking NBA start up in, indoor stadium games with fans? What is wrong with America? Jeez. Le don't even get me started on the leadership, and I'm not even talking. I'm non-political. I don't care how you voted. 
This has nothing to do being red states, blue state, Democrat, Republican. It doesn't even matter. And I'm not even getting into, you know, the pressures that the average American feels because there's no work. Now, let me, let me tell you, I'm an entrepreneur. I mean, you want my test kits? I'll sell you my test kits. I had the balls to put these together. You can't get these off the internet. I put this shit together. I love entrepreneurs. Most of my friends are business people or entrepreneurs. I don't have but one or two friends who are doctors, right? And my entrepreneur, entrepreneur friends sit there and go, but all these people are losing their businesses. All these restaurants are closing down. All these blah, blah, blah. And I go, it's one in a thousand Americans have died. Where's the fucking humanity? Who cares? But they're going to lose their businesses. Don't get mad at coronavirus. Get mad at your leaders who, who politicize this thing, who says, oh, it's overblown. It's fake news. Masks don't work. Masks do work. Shut it down. Open her up. Can't stay, down. Can't stay shut down forever. One in a thousand have died. Now, now listen. The title of my talk is One in a Thousand Americans Have Died, and it's not enough. Dr. Vong, that sounds mean. It's not enough. What type of sicko are you, Dr. V? I didn't say it wasn't enough for me. Fucking one was enough for me. But it's not enough for coronavirus. Okay? Number two, it's not enough for old corona. Your old friend Rona, right? One in a thousand is not enough for coronavirus. She's not done, or he's not done. <laughs> I don't mean to make her a woman. Coronavirus is not done. There is more to come. You got to remember everything lags. Let me do a little history for you guys. Europe got it first, Italy. We lagged behind Europe by about three to four weeks. What was happening in Europe was happening to us. We followed them by three weeks. We opened up a month before they did. We opened up uh, most states in June. We opened some states as early as mid-May because it's been two months. Got to open her up. Italy, who was three weeks ahead of us, didn't open up until like late July, August. A month and a half. And we we open up about two months too fucking soon. That's the problem. Lockdowns didn't work. Lockdowns didn't work. What the fuck's wrong with you? Lockdowns work for the rest of the world, but don't work for you? What? Of course it works. We just opened up too soon. So it's not enough for, for Corona. Rona's not done with us. We have not hit the peak, Dr. Vong. You're a fear monger. How about fuck you? How about that? I don't like your language. You like 300,000 deaths? It's Sunday. Why do you have to talk like this on God's day? Good Lord, don't even get me started. Heaven for Betsy. God damn it. I, you know what? When I was six years old, when I was five years old, my dad picked me up. In the middle of the night, out of my bed, and I woke up on a boat in the middle of the ocean. We were one of the refugee boat people, just my dad and I. He he left my mom. My mom didn't want to bring the whole family. She didn't want to leave. I'm one of six kids. I wake up in the boat. My dad loses two brothers on the boat. We all, our boat got attacked by Thailand pirates. We ended up in a Thailand refugee camp. Came over to the United States when I was six. My dad was 36. My dad was 36. We couldn't speak the language. We couldn't read. We didn't know anybody. I got off that plane. Six years old. My dad was 36. I don't know how we survived the night. 16 short years later, at the age of 52, my dad retires independently wealthy. 16 years. I tested out. I went to college, became a surgeon at the age of 32. Lost it all again at the age of, guess old, 36. 
had to leave my young family because I fucked it up. 2008. Who remembers 2008? 2008, 9, 10, fucking trying to keep everything afloat. And guess how old my daughter was? Five and a half going on six when I left. I was 36, went to a little town in Illinois, started all over. Started all over again. Four million dollars in debt, had to declare bankruptcy. Lost everything in Hurricane Ike, real estate, damage, creditors calling. My dad was the fucking American dream. Retired at age 52 after 16 years. Then he dies. Then Hurricane Ike wipes me out, and I don't have my number one support person, my dad. And here I am reliving his fucking life. Same age, 36, and my now my daughter's six. Started all over. Nine years later, at the age of 46, I retired. I walked away. 45. Walked away. And I retired because I could. Not because I was forced out. Not because of no fucking lawsuit. Nothing. I am the fucking American dream. And this is not the America that I fucking know. Can I have an amen, please? This is not the America that I know. Amen? This is not how Americans act. This is not how we behave. We are not selfish like this. We know that it's possible. We know that we can do this. We know that we can overcome this. We know that we can put our whole, like, our whole society interest ahead of our own fucking selfish interest. When did this happen? Good God. When did this happen? That we just like suddenly became dickheads. All right. So I don't want to hear it. Go away with your stupid fear monger, fake, you know, virus, fake disease comments. What is you're the fucking problem? It's one in a thousand. Americans have died as of December 27th. All right, let's do the math. Okay, coronavirus is not done with us. Dr. Vong, you fucking fear monger. What do you think? It's going to be. One. Okay. I'm going to tell you, these are not my opinions. These are facts, my friends. These are facts right here. Number three. Possibly one in 500 Americans might die. One in 500. Okay. Let's do the math for you guys one more time. The latest projections, the latest projections from University of Washington, again, 330 million Americans. The latest projection is April 1st, possibly, let's hit divide, 561,000 Americans might die. And in my little fucking small brain that says roughly one in 600. Let's see how I did. Hit equal. One in 580. Give it up for Dr. B. Give it up for Dr. B in Asian math. Hello? One in 588. That's the current projections for April 1st, according to the Washington University of Washington model. Okay? Now, they also say that if if we open up, if we roll back restrictions, if we open her up too soon, too fast, like what we did in the fall, let's do the math again, guys. 330 million Americans. These are just Americans divided by, they are thinking around 720,000 Americans are going to die. And you divide that, that's one in 460. Americans will die if we roll up too, too fast. Dude, guys, listen to me. I'm not a fucking fear monger. Everything I've said has come to fucking pass. This is how it should not be, guys. It doesn't have to be this way. This is not the America that I know. Seriously, one in 500 Americans, and you still think it's fake news? You still think it's a joke? You still think that 
it, like, you can't make tell me what to do. I got to have my barbecue cook off. I got to have my tailgating. What is wrong? See? And don't believe some of these fake bots, man. You know? Some of these fake bots. It's really stupid. What the, what the funny thing is, the fake bots don't get me. They don't bother me. It's the actual people who actually have a profile picture and you actually click on it and they actually have a hometown and they actually look like decent people and they actually have kids and they actually have someone who loves them and they're actually raising a kid and they're not all Uncle Billy's. A lot of them are Aunt Sally's. A lot of them are Aunt Sally's who still think that this is like fake and that I'm a bully and that I'm a fear monger. Good. Because it's not fucking working. See, the fact that you're calling me a fear monger means you're not afraid. I don't know why you're not afraid. I'm fucking afraid. I haven't gone anywhere. I'm not going to be one out of 500. I didn't have a Christmas gathering. I had me and my immediate family. All four of us. That's it. That's what I have. I don't know what to tell you. Practice what I preach, man. You're the one. You're the problem. Not me. If this did not wake you up today, I don't know what else will. But the vaccines are on the way. Dr. V, the vaccines are on the way. The va- I sell it again. So, this is the truth. They're getting vaccinated. People are getting vaccinated. About a million Americans have been vaccinated. Who remembers this? The original projection from our leadership, quote unquote, and the promises from Big Pharma was that 20 million Americans were going to be vaccinated by the end of the year. 20 million. We will be lucky to hit 2 million. We will be lucky to hit 2 million. So that means every timeline they're giving you, they're behind on. This does not take a genius to understand. Who Can I have an aha if you understand what I just said right then and there? They told us 20 million Americans by the end of the year would get vaccinated. Then that means, and then they said the, um, you know, you know, you know, Secretary Azar asshole said, you know, vaccines will be readily available in March. Well, if you are already behind, you're going to be lucky to hit 2 million this this month, this week. This is the last week of the year. So you said 20 million. You really, you're going to hit 2 million. The the military, the war operation warp speed, they've all said, I fucked up. We logistically, we messed up. We didn't get them delivered, right? So now you're already behind. So that means your timeline that you've given the American people are behind. But Uncle Billy was trying to hold on to January 6th, Dr. Vaughn. You don't understand. You wait and see January 6th when the Senate meets and votes on the Electoral College. Then you'll see this election fraud will get overturned. Are you a special type of stupid? That's not going to happen. No, no. Vice President Pence is going to turn down the Electoral College. He, that's not his role. He doesn't get to say that. He doesn't get to unilaterally dismiss the Electoral College. Even if he wanted to, he can't do it. It's not in his power. You are the one following the fake news, not me. You're the one who's misconceived, not me. I've been very clear about this, man. Okay? This is a leadership issue. We are in this position because of leadership. Now, let me tell you the last thing. We are here because we have reached a point in America that we have basically, we will basically tough it out. Okay? The vaccines won't be um, to the normal people because they've got to vaccinate all the healthcare workers. They've got to vaccinate the elderly in the nursing homes they don't have enough vaccines you guys have already seen the vaccine productions are behind 
Oh, but but Trump just like negotiated another hundred million doses with Pfizer, starting in July. Pfizer's already said they can't make any more vaccine. You've already bought what they could make, and the ones that you didn't want to make buy, like they sold it to other countries. Okay, and I'm not even going to get into the new strains and variants. That UK strain I talked about the other day is now is all over the news. Did you know that it's it went to France? It's in France. It's in Japan. It's like in Sweden. It's in the fucking United States. We just haven't identified it yet. Okay, and that's not even the bad one. See, the people in my challenge, they've been hearing me tell them all this stuff for the last several months. And they've been hearing me for the last week talk about the South African strain. There's a South African strain that's worse than this UK strain. The South African strain looks like it's attacking young kids, whereas the current coronavirus does not. Not really. So all the Uncle Billy's out there are like, see, little kids, you're young and healthy. Like, they just get over. It's like nothing. Uh, viruses mutate. And you've let this fucker get out and change. And he's out in the, like, he's out there. It mutated because we didn't fucking squash it. Because you had to have your tailgating. Does that make sense what I just said there? Can I get some ahas for science right there? Because we didn't crush this down. You have more viruses mutating. I mean, more viruses replicating. And the more of them that get to replicate, by random chance alone, they're going to get a mutation that survives better. This is called science. When you have a small number of viruses and they smallly replicate, let me say it in terms you can understand. They smallly replicate. It's less likely to make a new mutation. But what you got a big number, a lot of viruses, and they are bigly replicating, bigly. Chances of them stumbling along because they're doing it so bigly and strongly and, you know, <coughs> they're having bigger numbers the chances of them finding a mutation that actually survives is much bigly. God damn it. And now you're like, see, they lied to us. There's a new strain. There's a new variant. There's a bit, bit, bit. It doesn't work. You fucking caused this. Oh, now I'm out of here because he's just, he's just name calling at this point. You got to have a fucking thicker skin than my four letter words. Are you kidding me? People are dying. One in a thousand Americans have died and you're not offended, but you're offended that I'm mocking some leader or that I'm calling you a dirty name because you don't want to mask up because you don't want to social distance. Oh, Dr. Vong, I love your message, but if you could just clean up your language, the fuck is wrong with you? We are way past the whole language thing. I did it differently back in July when the numbers were going crazy and I was like, people were like, Dr. Vaughn, why aren't you doing coronavirus videos? Cause we, we were locked down. People were staying home. I was happy. I was doing my weight loss challenge. I was showing them how to cook recipes. I was showing them how to grow gardens. And then fucking July happens. I had to get back on camera and it didn't work. Cause you guys can hear Dr. Fauci not cuss and you can hear Sanjay Gupta not cuss and you can hear whatever medical legal expert they have on TV not cuss doesn't fucking work doesn't get through our fucking thick skulls does it I'm an American dream I'm the American dream not you not you you're the American nightmare you're the American nightmare I'm the future of this country. Ridiculous. Ridiculous. I stayed up late and studied, took the test, when you were too busy drinking, killing your brain cells. Seriously, you can't, can't think straight. You're too emotional. You never even stopped to think that 330,000 Americans dying means one in a thousand that the latest projections that if we open up too soon, that 700,000 Americans could die 
means one in 500 Americans could die. And somehow you think in your little pea brain that that's not that big of a number. Compared to 330 million Americans, it's not that big of a number. That's one in a thousand, dickhead. What's your problem? You're offended? That's your problem. You're too soft. You can't even sit for the exam or study for the exam or sit and read a book. That's why we're in this fucking situation. Okay? Now, the people who've done the work, they're fucking dying. The nurses are getting sick. The doctors are dying. The respiratory techs are taking this shit home to their families. So they haven't seen their parents. I have surgeon colleagues who are fucking sleeping in a tent in their front yard so they don't infect their families. What is wrong with you? It's ridiculous. You have some young nurse who just finished nursing school. You've got med students who are doing rotations who fucking Stanford University did not give the vaccine to the fucking residents and med students. Oh, it was an oversight. We, we forgot to include them. Oh, but look at our awesome leadership. You fucking kidding me? You got people in the streets celebrating a presidential election. You got people in the streets celebrating a presidential steal. What is wrong with y'all? You got a, a young nursing assistant who just finished a six month, nine month, one year degree. And now they're freaking shaking in their boots. What the hell? Oh, but they lie about the numbers. Oh, but they get paid more for coronavirus. The fuck is wrong with you? You think that respiratory tech, that nurse practitioner, you think they're actually making all that much? They're not getting fucking hazard pay. You won't even wear a fucking mask. The hell? I will be honest with you. <laughs> I will be honest with you. I looked back at my video when I was um, when I was uh, editing it for my YouTube channel, and I was like, "Dude, I need to calm it down." So I was like, "Next time, next time I do a Facebook Live, I'm gonna calm it down." <laughs> this is me fucking calm. <laughs> Because what got to me was I said, oh, my God, it's one in a thousand Americans. That's somebody's daughter, man. That's somebody's mother. You just lost your future wife. You just lost your future wife. Report of a, you know, 28-year-old medical student dying. Hadn't even started their careers. Ridiculous. And that's just COVID. I haven't even gotten into the other shit. People losing their jobs, suicides, alcoholism, marriages breaking up, hungry kids, spousal abuse, domestic violence. I haven't even started telling y'all about because you know I tell this in my challenge group. I've been warning them about the, the small crimes that are about to occur when people are out of money, they're broke, break-ins, Car break-ins, thefts, deliveries, those numbers are going to go up. They don't even make the news anymore. Have, do you guys know about all these gun shootings? Bowling alley gun shootings, the Nashville bomb, you know, that went off in Nashville. And then there's Philadelphia gun shooting and also don't even make the news anymore, man. Ridiculous. All right. So... It's going to get worse before it gets better. The timeline is pushed. Okay. What number am I on? I mean, I'll just do number seven. The timeline is pushed further. I want you guys to understand this, and then I'll test myself and ask, take your questions while we get the results. Um, hold on. Sorry. Okay. The timeline is pushed further out. They're behind on the number of vaccines. They're behind on the production of vaccines. They're behind, that means the rollout, right? But Americans are gonna be impatient. The Americans are gonna jump the, the guns. Exactly what happened with the Oklahoma Sooner land rush. They're gonna start too soon. They're gonna jump the line. They're gonna open up. They're, the weather's gonna get nicer. They're gonna forget. Listen, the peak, listen to me. The peak cases, 
the number of cases will peak around mid January. We've got about two more weeks of this shit. We're going to be going up, but the numbers have been down this last week. No, they're not down. They're underreported because of the holidays and centers being down and closed. You got to give some people some time off. This is an artificial decrease. We already saw it yesterday. The numbers back up over 220,000. I'm telling you, we're going to be peaking like a rocket ship, man. It's going to be like a Beatles hit song. It's going to go straight to number one, man. It's going to be taken off, right? And um, we're going to peak around mid-January, okay? Because this travel holiday period extends into New Year's. So around mid-January, it's going to peak. Then hospitalizations, which you know we hit 120,000 people in the hospitals with COVID. That's going to peak three weeks later, two to three weeks later. So that takes you to the end of end of um, end of uh, January, and then deaths lag two weeks after that. So now you're talking about deaths peaking around Valentine's Day, and Valentine's Day is about the time when these first round of vaccinations will actually start getting antibody formation inside their body. The first actual, the first actual protection from vaccines won't happen until uh, around Valentine's Day. And that's only about a million people, 2 million doses by the end of the year, right? So 2 million people around Valentine's Day will have vaccinated antibodies. All right. Now, because these numbers are getting, are, are behind, does this make sense? The timeline has been pushed out, guys. It's not what they're telling you on the news. It's delayed. It's not right around the corner. Listen to me. This is not the beginning of the end. Whoever fucking started that lie, that's another fucking lie. It's not the beginning of the end. We are in the middle of the winter. You have to listen to me. This is the middle of the winter. We are in our darkest moments. 2020 will not end until April 1st, 2021. The end of 2020, this crazy ass year that we call 2020 will not end until about April 1st. April 1st, listen to me, will be the beginning of the end. And the beginning will last all the way to 4th of July. 4th of July, it's Independence Day. It's like the movie, Independence Day. I'm going to take my Apple computer and upload a virus to the aliens and kill them. I'm going to kill this fucking coronavirus with my Apple technology. <laughs> Independence Day. That will be the real start of the end where life starts to start seeming some normal. By the fall, we will have some no normalcy, but you, we will still need to wear face masks all through 2021, guys. Because why, Dr. Vaughn? Why, Dr. Vaughn? We don't know the fucking data on these variants, these strains, right? We don't know about lasting immunity. We have to understand this, okay? All right. Timeline is pushed further out. Please be patient. I hope you had a great Christmas holiday. I'm going to test myself with the rapid test real quick. You can, and I'll take your questions if you want to hang on. But I always like to end these with, um, you know, my prayers and wishes for, for uh, our uh, frontline workers and um, healthcare providers, our EMTs, paramedics, police officers, teachers. We often forget to thank our teachers. Um, and, hosp and uh, you know, school people, but our hospital administrators, our nurses, RTs, everybody, ENTs, you know, doc, you know, anesthesiologists, nurses, nurses, aides, you know, prayers to them. But remember, they're not the front line; they're the back line. They're trying to save our sorry asses. So if that's true, then who's the front line, Doctor V? Remember, we are the front line. Hashtag, we are the front line. Okay. What happens with this virus, as I have been saying, is depends on how we behave. We are the front lines, okay? We are the front lines. And um, we will get through this a lot sooner if we can do this, okay?